This is a 3D printed lock based on a design from the 1850s and it's filled with anti-pick features to push the limits of how secure a 3D printed lock can be. You can probably tell just by looking at the key that this is a serious lock, so let me show you how it works. So what makes this lock so special? Well, it's a warded six lever detector lock with a curtain, and this was a height of security in the mid 19th century. At the time, detector locks had been around for a while, about 30 years, and they were commonly used in banks and other high security uses. In my last video, I made an early version of a detector lock, the Chubb 1824 detector lock. And there are about 30 years of technological advances between the two of these, so I wanna show some of the differences. The first difference is pretty obvious. Uh, the new one is a whole lot smaller. So I don't think I need to explain why that's better. The second main difference is that this new lock has six levers where the old one only has four. And in very simple terms, the more levers you have in a lock, the more difficult it will be to pick. Let's compare the keys. This is a key for the old lock. And as you can see, there are five teeth. The first is for the bolt and then four for the four levers in the lock. Now let's compare that to the new key. This one has eight teeth. One's for the bolt, six are for the levers, and the last is for the curtain. Plus, there's a cutout for the ward, which I'll explain in a bit. To understand how this lock works, imagine we're using it to secure a door. When the red bolt is extended, that means the door is locked. So, you lock up and leave for the day, and then someone comes along and tries to pick your lock. The first thing they're gonna run into is the curtain, which is this blue piece. The curtain encases the keyhole and blocks access to the inside of the lock. There's a small slot into which the key is inserted and the curtain rotates as you turn the key. Now imagine you're trying to pick this. You need to get your tools into the lock to access the bolt and the levers, but you only have a small slot to work with. The curtain restricts the space you have to access the inside of the lock. And there's a bonus feature for the curtain. It gives tactile feedback. You get a little click when the key aligns with the keyhole. Next up is the detector which is a star of the show, and it's the green lever all the way in the back with this little rod. If someone tries to pick this lock and lifts a lever too high, the detector trips. It will completely bind the lock, and even with the right key, the lock won't open, alerting you to the tampering. I have a lock here with the levers removed to show how the detector works. The detector is a lever itself, so when you use the key, it will lift the detector up to the correct height for the bolt to pass through. This little triangular spring is applying pressure to the detector as it gets lifted up and down, but keep an eye on it at the moment right when the detector gets lifted a little bit too high. You can see it drops down and now it's holding the detector in the up position. If we try to use the key to open it, you can see that the bolt stump is now being blocked by the detector. So this bolt is not going to open until we reset the detector. To reset the detector, we use the same key but rather than trying to turn it the same way we would to unlock it, we need to go the opposite direction. And we're gonna push this bolt to the left a tiny bit. And you can see that there's this little tail on the bolt and that's gonna lift up on the spring and reset the detector. Let me show you that again. And here's what it looks like from the back side of the lock. Getting all these pieces to interact properly was definitely the biggest challenge of this entire lock, but I've gotten it to a point where it works very well. The last feature I want to show is called the ward, but before I get into that, I want to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. Whether you need custom PCBs, CNC machining, or 3D printing, you can be certain PCBWay will deliver with the quality your project demands. Placing orders on the website is simple, prices are affordable, and delivery is fast. So if you're working on a project that needs a special part, PCBWay has you covered. Thank you to PCBWay for supporting this video. I mentioned the wards at the beginning of the video when I showed you this key, but the wards are actually these two little walls inside the lock. When you put the key into the keyhole, it drops down in between the two wards. And as you begin to rotate the key, you can see the cutout goes right around the wards. So you can imagine that a key without the right cutout won't be able to rotate in the first place. So those are all the features in this lock and you can see that it's pretty complicated. 
You might be wondering why this is not incorporated into a vault or some other project. And the reason is that this lock was a project in itself. It took a ton of work. So I do plan to incorporate this into a vault of some sort, but I wanted to make this video first to explain this lock and also to share the files. So if any of you want, are interested in printing this, the files will be available for free on printables and maker world. If you have any issues, please let me know or any positive feedback would be good too. That'd be better, but I want to work out any bugs before I build this into a vault. So assembly is very simple. All of the parts print without support, except for the key. Um, so let me show you how this goes together. I've printed everything here in PETG because some of these parts need to flex and if you use PLA they will deform over time. I've already skipped a few steps by gluing in these two metal dowels which are 5mm by 30mm and I've glued in these three spring pieces. This is a front cover and you can see that it has these metal inserts which I've added already and these are used to screw the two pieces together. If you don't want to deal with metal inserts, you can just glue everything together and I will include some 3D printed caps to fill in the little holes on the back. The first step is to take your bolt and add it onto the frame. There is a little track on the back and you need to press it into place because there is a slight taper on the, on the track that will hold this bolt in place. It moves freely, but if you tip it forward, it won't fall out. Next, we're gonna take the detector and add it onto this metal dowel. Make sure that this spring is pushing down on the top of the detector and it should be applying a little bit of pressure like we showed earlier. Then we're gonna take the remainder of our levers and put them on. The order is very important and you can see that there are these little indents which indicate which number goes on next. So number two goes on after the detector, then number three, and so on. I've put on the first six levers, but I'm gonna leave off this lever for now. Now I'm gonna add the curtain, which is this piece here. And there is a little recess down near where the dowel uh, is inserted. So just slip the curtain on like that, and then add this last lever. You want the little indent in the curtain to align with the little peg in the lever. The last step is to take the cap and just put it over the top. If you're using screws, you just screw them on through the back here. All right, and this lock is done. As I mentioned, assembly is pretty straightforward. And despite how complicated this is, I hope you were able to learn something. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button down below and leave a comment. If you love the video, please hit subscribe. Thanks for watching.